Ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated by this idea that writers exist. That all of these stories that we consume through books and video games and movies and shows, that they all come from somewhere. That every story that I loved was at some point a passing thought in some stranger's brain, but that they took this thought and that through lifeless letters and words and sentences and paragraphs and pages and chapters, they were able to create something that didn't exist before. They were able to make something out of nothing. And when that something was presented to an audience, that audience was able to imagine a world that never existed. That audience was able to feel real human emotions based off of things that never transpired. That audience was able to ask themselves questions that were never really asked. And I've always seen this act of writing, this act of creation, as like the coolest thing that a, that a human being could do. To take your experience on this earth and distill it into a story or even music or drawing. Everyone who I've ever looked up to was always an artist. This to me has always been the pinnacle of the human experience. And uh, <laughs> I think my mom has something to do with that. Whenever I was taking a bath as a kid, my mom would set up a cassette player next to the bathtub that would play this series of audio dramas for children from the 80s. And I loved these stories. I would listen to these stories over and over and over and over again, up to the point where I can't listen to them anymore because the cassettes are so worn out. They no longer sound like children's stories. They sound like a goddamn satanic ritual. But I grew up on these stories. And at some point, when I was six or seven, my mom asked me, oh, what's, what's your favorite story? And I told her. And she said, ah, yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed writing that one. And that moment blew my mind. I was like, hold up, you wrote these? These came from a person that I know? <laughs> um, and my mom used to work as children's audio drama writer in the 80s during the communist regime. And this revelation that I was related to someone who was able to make stories absolutely blew my mind. I remember being a seven-year-old and being like, holy shit, this is, this is a thing that people can do. They can tell stories. That's so awesome. And I put together a little comic book called Dinosaur Boy. It was this story about a kid whose superpower is he transforms into a dinosaur. And nearly two decades later, I would end up turning that comic book into an animated series during a really difficult part of my life. And I figured I'd share that story with you guys. Hi, my name is Mike Jesus Langer, I'm a short story writer on the internet, and welcome to Broadcast from Prague 13, the podcast where I talk about writing and occasionally tell long-winded stories about my creative exploits. So the story will start off at a fairly vague point uh, because of non-disclosure agreements, but when I was 24, I got offered my first semi-serious writing job. Uh, I got invited to be a part of a writing team that was working on a project that was meant to get pitched to some serious people. And when I first got the invitation, I was over the moon. Because prior to that, I had spent years trying to make this writing thing work. I uh, wrote a bunch of short stories and scripts and made short films, just doing whatever I could to get noticed by the powers that be that could bless me with uh, a writing job. And I got it. And I... Remember how happy I was on my way to that first writing room meeting. 
But after about a week of, of working in this environment, I became absolutely miserable because it, I, I really disliked the project. Uh, I disliked the grand majority of people that I worked with. I, I hated the environment. And every moment of that job made me uncomfortable. Uh, hands down, the worst gig <laughs> that I've ever worked. But this was also the thing that I really wanted, the, the thing that I had spent so much time pursuing. And as soon as I got a taste of the quote-unquote real industry, I realized that that's not something that I want to be a part of. And the closer we got to completion on the project, the more it looked like the project would get sold. And if the project got sold, we would get paid out a significant sum of money, but we would also be expected to keep on working on that project afterwards. And I could see just like the next seven years of my life disappearing into, into this hole. And it stressed me out to no end. I was very unhappy during that time. Um, but luckily, I guess, <laughs> to, to, my, uh, to my happiness, the project didn't get sold and the whole thing just kind of fell apart. To say that I was happy that the project didn't get sold, though, would be very disingenuous. I wasn't happy. Uh, I mean, I was kind of excited about not having to spend the rest of my 20s in that particular environment, but I was more so disappointed by what that job was, by what my dream was, because I presumed that regardless of how hard I would work, I would end up back at a similar position as I did with the writing room. And weeks passed and I might have tried working on something else, but uh, couldn't work up the motivation to properly focus on a script or a story. And then one morning in late February 2018, I woke up to find my right foot completely paralyzed. I couldn't feel it, I couldn't move it, and um, it was kind of scary. <laughs> uh, I wasn't exactly the healthiest 24 year old in the world, so I just presumed this was my body reacting to like poor nutrition and lack of sleep and all those sorts of things. Uh, so for about a week I ignored it, um, the paralysis didn't get any better, in fact I, I lost more and more feeling in my foot, and then I think after about a week of trying to ignore this, I, I made like the ludicrous decision of, oh, you ca I can't feel my leg because I'm just not moving it enough, let's go out for a jog. Uh, so I went jogging, not being able to feel one of my feet, uh, and to convince myself that this was all just in my head, I tried running as fast as possible. When you run, when you sprint, uh, with a paralyzed foot, you're gonna fall down and you're gonna eat shit in a very, very serious fashion. So, um, I fall down and uh, from the pavement I'm like, okay, this is, this is a real problem. I should seek professional help. So I go back home and I seek the help of uh, the most trustworthy professional possible. I Google my symptoms, which uh, Google comes back with some very direct answers. It says uh, there's basically three options for me. I either have A, a brain tumor, uh, B, spinal cancer, or C, diabetes, or D, possibly uh, a combination of the previously three stated ailments. This scared the shit out of me. Um, and I made an appointment with a doctor and I went over uh, to that doctor's place like uh, a week later and um, this is in Czech Republic. My Czech isn't that great. I speak better English than I speak any other language. Uh, so there was some level of, I guess, miscommunication with the doctor, <laughs> to put it lightly. Uh, I come in and I say, look, I, I can't feel my foot. I can't move my foot. I show him exactly how my foot can't move. 
And his immediate reaction is, oh, okay, where does it hurt? And I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt. That's, that's the reason why I'm here. If my foot simply hurts, I wouldn't go to a hospital. I can't feel my foot. I can't move my foot. This is the scary part. This is why I'm seeking medical attention. And according to Google, I could have uh, a brain tumor, a spinal tumor, or diabetes. And the guy just looks at me and he says, uh, well, you're definitely too young for diabetes. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing you want to hear from your doctor. And he keeps on asking me, like, okay, so, but, but where does it hurt? And I'm like, it doesn't hurt. That's, that's why I'm here. And we talk for like five minutes and then finally he's like, okay, well, here's some pills. Go to the pharmacy, pick them up. Um, and I take the paper, I go to the pharmacy, and as I'm standing in line at the pharmacy, I try to make sense of the chicken scratches on the paper. And um, guess what the guy prescribed me? Painkillers. <sighs> so I come back like a week later, and I'm like, hey, you prescribed me painkillers. Um, even though I said I can't feel my foot. So the guy sends me to a barrage of doctors to figure out what's wrong with me. And it's always doctor visit, four day break, doctor visit, four day break, doctor visit, four day break. And whenever I meet with a doctor, I uh, bring up my Google research, which I'm, I'm sure they loved. Uh, and the response is always a very unanimous, don't worry about the diabetes, buddy. You're too young for that. Um... And it was during those four-day breaks when the existential crisis really set in. Because the more I googled, the more I thought about it, the more I was certain that I was indeed dying. And <clears throat> with death knocking on the door, I started to get really angry at myself for, for having 25 years in this world and having a really strong dream to create stuff, but never really taking it seriously, never really making stuff, or not making enough stuff. So, as I was in all of these uh, hospital waiting rooms, I decided to work on a project. And the project that kept on popping up in my head was that comic book I wrote when I was seven. I don't remember what was in that comic book. Uh, I don't think it exists anymore. But the idea of a superhero whose superpower is that he turns into a dinosaur was uh, something that made it easier to avoid the fact that I was sitting inside of a hospital, worried out of my mind. So this whole doctor visit thing drags on for a while. Um, and I wish that I had some beautiful bits of insight from this period of my life for you, uh, but I am pretty sure I'm blocking out most of these memories. All that I really have left to kind of look back on is my notes for Dinosaur Boy and the journal entries, which I made during that time. And the journal entries really just serve as a means of underscoring how scared I was, how certain I was that the paralyzed foot was the start of something much, much worse. Um, but then April 19th rolls around. April 19th, 2018. I finish off the first draft of Dinosaur Boy uh, just a couple of minutes before I have to leave the house to go to the hospital. And I didn't take any of the notes with me because I figured, hey, um, you know, I need to let this sit for like two weeks to be able to give myself clear headed feedback. So all I took with me was my crack screen iPod Nano. And I'm sitting in the waiting room listening to a bunch of old music I had on that iPod when all of a sudden the song Hoverboards by Mala Ruckus comes on. Uh, and the folks from Mala Ruckus, they're my friends in the flesh and bone world. Uh, so this, this song means a bit more extra to me because of that. Uh, but the song starts off with like a little jingle, then there's a small pause, and then the music actually starts. And the jingle plays, and that's when the nurse walks out to tell me, like, yeah, the doctor's ready to see you. And I pause it. I pause my iPod, and I walk into the doctor's office. It was a neurologist. And she was the nicest doctor I, I've interacted during that whole affair. <laughs> um, 
And she says something like, when I walk in, she's like, oh, I think I know what's wrong with you. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? And she's like, mm, well, let's run some tests. And for 20 minutes, uh, we run bullshit tests for what I only presume is uh, dramatic tension. But after 20 minutes of like making me walk around the room and like bend my legs and a variety of other stuff. Um, she says, hey, uh, so what you have is, is nothing serious. We're just going to give you some uh, pills. Uh, you probably hurt yourself while exercising. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so because I don't exercise. And she's like, oh, okay, well, have you had a really stressful period in your life? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, that's, that's your body reacting to stress. Don't worry about it. Just, just take, these, uh, take these pills and you'll be fine in like a week. And the, the moment of, of me walking out of the hospital, just being in awe of like oh, this thing that has been weighing on me so much over the past couple of months suddenly disappearing and and being explained away as as a simple response to stress i remember that moment ever so vividly and that moment has a soundtrack it's the soundtrack to hoverboards uh because i put that thing back in my ear and it's a super cheery song i'm just kind of walking around being like ah yeah i'm not dying this is great and then there was this one particular bench where I just kind of, the song ends, I sit down and I'm just emotionally exhausted. I, I, I text back a bunch of my friends that were, uh, you know, kind of the people that I would vent to whenever whenever I got too scared. I tell them I'm okay. Just kind of sit there, take the earbuds out of my ear, just, just look around and um, just felt really alive. And after about half an hour of just, just sitting there watching uh, the world pass me by. I uh, hit up my friend Kate, or June, or Teresa. She has a lot of names. Um, and I'm like, hey, you do animation. I have this script for the show called Dinosaur Boy. And we ended up making Dinosaur Boy with uh, a bunch of my friends featuring like a lot of music from people that I know. And it was this delightful little project that we put together uh and when we put it online it didn't do that great <laughs> it was uh it was our first attempt at animation it was my first attempt at, at, at writing like a long form uh web series sort of thing but i keep on i keep on jogging past that bench where where, where i had that moment of, of realizing that things are going to be fine I see that bench, you know, every second day. And I keep on thinking back to, to like that specific moment where I realized if I didn't have that health scare, if I, if I wasn't pushed to, to those lengths, if, 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 if I, if I wasn't so scared and miserable, I don't think that I ever would have gotten around to making Dinosaur Boy. And as I record this, I can't help but to draw some parallels to, to what I'm doing right now. I mean, first of all, Apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom made uh, radio plays in the 80s. I make audio dramas in the 2020s. But I also think that all of the work that I've done this year, work which I am immensely proud of, uh, wouldn't have come about if 2020 was just another regular year. I think it is through the cascade of personal tragedies that I've experienced and I presume you've experienced because 2020 wasn't kind to anyone. I think it's it's through that unhappiness or through that need for meaning um, that I was able to to do as much work as I have done. And I guess a part of my instinct is to end this on an optimistic, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But that's, that's not always possible. Sometimes life kicks harder than it should. And sometimes it's hard to get up. But I do think that using uh, creativity to, to get yourself out of a bad headspace, to get 
yourself distracted from from uncomfortable realities is a great way to not just keep yourself sane but also to have a little nugget of yourself to look back at years later to remember what that experience was like to remember the lows because I think making the lows memorable instilling some sort of meaning onto them makes them something other than a low it, it, it makes them a moment in your life when your character was tested rather than just a shitty time <laughs> um, and if you've listened this far I hope you're doing well <laughs> uh, I hope things are looking up in your existence um, and thank you for listening. I, I, this is the second time that I'm telling this story. First time was, oof, I want to say like a month after releasing Dinosaur Boy, uh, there is a YouTube video somewhere in the unlisted category, which I'll link in the description because why not? Uh, which is a very nervous Mike, uh, making a five minute recording on his iPhone, uh, set to the footage of, uh, of survive, of the surviving Mars video game. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the story of how I wrote an animated web series because I thought I was dying. Uh, I don't know what I'll talk about next week. I uh, think I'll keep it kind of open-ended. If you got any questions, feel free to pop by that comment section. Um, if you have enjoyed this podcast, make sure you join my YouTube page. My name is Mike Jesus Langer on YouTube. I am Mike J. Langer on Twitter. I have a Facebook page called Mike Jesus Langer Presents, and I also have a subreddit, which is r slash MJL Presents, where I post up my stories, uh, the text versions, the audio versions, and these podcasts, and possibly other stuff that I might do in the future. So make sure you follow me. But with that said, hope everybody out there is safe, sane, and healthy, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>